It's uh, it's about four thirty in the morning. We've had this we've had this bear that's been walking around camp. So uh, we can't see him. It's so dark. Okay, none of that's actually true because obviously you can tell there's a whiteboard behind me. But it's good to see you guys. Uh, Hopefully everything's been okay. Obviously, you can tell today is Thursday, uh, live and in color, uh, hence why I'm in uh, camouflage for uh, for everything. So this should be your Monday, my first week Monday um, there in Colorado, and hopefully I have already harvested an elk and I'm trying to find a way to get him home at this point in time. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. I have a plan to lecture today. Um uh, theoretically tomorrow we will see Wednesday you know that some people are going to be gone because of the cheer dance situation and so because of that everybody not just those people that are going to be here but everybody has homework due it is a bunch of things I'm just telling you most of them are one question things so I mean I don't care that it says 49 items a lot of them are just short things some of them are not um Remember, click on the left side. Don't sit there and just guess at stuff and take your grade down. Click on the left side, watch the video, or read whatever's there and get the information and do well on it. Um, but for those of you who have that ability because you're in class Wednesday, please feel free uh, to get your homework done while you're in there. Uh, Thursday, I will give you a review, and Friday, you have a test for me. Uh, that will be uh, on active and passive transport basically. All right. So today I'm going to give a lecture. We're going to see whether or not this lecture is two lectures or one. Okay. So before I get going, um, let me actually, you know, start a, some form of a stopwatch so that I don't, uh, give you a 60 minute video that you somehow I've got to watch in uh, 50 minutes. We have great coffee here in the middle of the woods. It's Fantastic. Keeps you warm, especially on 19 degree days, which apparently three of those days are slotted to be 19 degrees. And I don't have any more clothes to wear because I'm not buying any more. So there's a chance we're just going to tuck tail and run at some point and just come home. But anyway. All right. So let me move myself around and give you... what we need. All right. I'm going to move me way down here. About like so. Hopefully I will be out of the way. All right. So remember, we talked about all of this information. Okay. Uh, membrane structure and function, uh, fluid mosaic model, uh, everything, the membrane itself has selective permeability, primarily going to allow small things to come in and out. Uh, we gave an overview of these proteins and their functions. Uh, I'll go over my review, but guaranteed you're going to have to know these. Um, there are one, two, three, four, five, six of them on here. I'm going to go ahead and tell you you're going to have to know several. Okay going to have to know what they are and what they do. Okay, Transport proteins, enzymes, attachment proteins, receptor proteins, junction proteins, glycoproteins. You're going to just have to, you're going to have to memorize them. Nothing you can do. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let us go, trying to get us back to where we were. Diffusion, the tendency of particles to spread out evenly uh, in an available space. Remember, diffusion is always going to be, right, no energy, so it's passive. Remember, passive, that's what that means, is no energy is expelled to do so. And remember, it's always going to go from what? From a high concentration to a low concentration. That's what diffusion does. Osmosis is no different. Okay? Osmosis is water, except with water, it's going to move. And as it moves, it's going to go from low solute to high solute. We'll see that in a second. Again, that is not low concentration to high concentration. If it does that, that's active. If it goes from low to high, it is an active transport situation. It requires an expenditure of energy to do that. Okay? So I'll get into that in more detail here in a little bit. Uh, but I want you to get an idea, okay? So, again, look, you can notice our diffusion, right? Everything seeking for an equilibrium, guaranteed going to ask you a question on test about equilibrium, uh, what that means. It should not be. That's not some kind of specialized idea, okay? All right, so the diffusion of water across the selective permeable membrane is called osmosis. So I could ask you whether or not uh, osmosis is diffusion. It is. I could ask you whether or not all diffusion is osmosis. 
not really. Okay. I want you to notice, and this is what we talked about the other day, right? If the membrane is not permeable to the actual solute, and in times, if it is permeable to the solute, it still will not express energy to move it. Because sometimes those solutes are still large enough that it can't move that without expending ATP. Now, there's other times where we can do that. There's what we call facilitated fusion. But what I want you to understand is, is that if we don't have that ability, if we don't have to expend energy to balance things, we aren't going to do it. Look, not poking fun at any of you guys. It's no different than all of you. Okay? Every single solitary thing that we do, we do typically as easy as we can. It's just the truth of it. Um, our cells are built that way. They don't want to expend energy if they don't have to expend energy. They don't want, when we talk about facilitated diffusion, for instance, it brings glucose in for free. Why would we want to do that? Well, simple. It wants free things to produce energy from. It doesn't want to have to spend energy to get energy. Doesn't make a lot of sense. So it would prefer to get energy for free. Not always possible. Sometimes you can't do it. But I want us to get this concept in our head, if we can, of the fact that there is a desire for a cell to do as little as possible. In the case of osmosis, when we think about the ideas of solute, this is simple, and we've been over this already, and I'm going to, I think this is where we ended the other day. I'm going to try my best to hit home with this enough that there's no questions whatsoever, okay? So, let's watch. So, diffusion. Five percent salt inside the cell, one percent salt outside the cell. Okay? Diffusion is the movement of what? Anything. Osmosis, however, is the movement of what? Water. So let me ask this question. Blakeney Bird. Water is going to move from low solute to high solute. Which way is the water going to move in this case? In or out of the cell? That's correct, Ms. Blakeney. It's going to do this. Remember, as we draw water from this, this percentage goes up. This is not a percentage of water. This is a percentage of salt. So in other words, think of it as if you had 100% water, you had zero salt. In this case, we have 99% water and 1% salt. Just It's an easy way to think of concentrations. It's not an exact statement there. But just think of it that way. Over here, we have 95% water. We have a higher concentration over here, right? Let me start over here, of water, okay? It's still going from low to high concentrations of water in this case, right? But most importantly, it is going from low to high concentrations of solute, 1% to 5%, okay? Let me rephrase that, by the way. That's high to low concentrations of water which is exactly down uh, a gradient, which is what we wanted to do, okay? So when you think of osmosis, you have to think solute. As soon as you see that word, put that other word with it. Osmosis, solute, be done, okay? Like, you have no choice. I wonder if I can move that glare. I cannot because the glare is coming from where my lights are. So nothing, nothing you can do besides put osmosis and the ideas of a solute together. And again, it is always going to be from low solute to high solute. As we lose water here, right, we're going to go up in percentage, right? If I have 99% water here and I put 1% over here, I now have 98% water and 2% salt. It went up. Over here, if I add water to this, right, I've taken, let's say it was 95 and 5, I've now made it 96 and 5. It's 101%, right? So I have less salt concentration. So I'm lowering this and raising this, and that's the equilibrium that we're trying to balance. That's what osmosis does. Why would we do osmosis versus moving the sodium chloride in and out? Why would we not just move sodium chloride this way, right, to balance it? Simple. Moving sodium chloride outside of this, if it's not going to be done so in a facilitated diffusion situation, it's going to require a protein and, an, and some expenditure of energy to do so. This cell doesn't want to do that. Okay? So... Put that concept in your brain of 
what is going on, right, with an osmosis diffusion type situation. Diffusion, again, is high to low concentrations. Oxygen is high on the outside and moves low to the inside or vice versa. Osmosis is a form of diffusion. And in technicalities, it is still moving from high to low concentrations of itself. But for us, all we think when we think of osmosis is, is we think water, solute, low to high. Once you put that in your brain, you're not going to miss any questions about that. And there's going to be a bajillion questions about that on our test. Okay? So put it up there, store it away permanently. You'll be much better in the long run for it, I assure you. Okay. That's literally what this is telling us. We already went over this. Okay? This is where I think we ended the other day. And it's basically what I just drew on the board for you. Okay? So notice here, right? Same general idea. Here's our membrane. Okay? You can see it right here in the middle. We have a higher concentration of solute. Higher concentration of solute. Right? Look at what water does. Water is going to move itself. That's why we've lost water on this side. We've gained water on this side. Take a look for me, if you will. Is there still more solute over here? Yeah, there is. There's more solute. Does that matter? Nope. Because the concentration of this solute, the percentage of this solute, based on the amount of water in it, is now the same as this. Right? That's what we're looking for for the balance. Okay? Not trying to balance water here. Trying to balance solute. All right? So, again, osmosis. Movement from low concentration of solute to high concentration. Not low concentration of water to high concentration of water. Okay? Low to high of our actual solute. Okay? All right. I'm going to see if our videos will play and work. The plasma membrane is permeable to water molecules, and the movement of water into and out of cells is critical to life. Diffusion of water molecules across a selectively permeable membrane is a special kind of passive transport called osmosis. So, your definition is osmosis. And again, this is a free moving thing. We're going to learn when we talk about isotonic solutions. Water is pretty much constantly moving in and out of a cell. Like, all the time, depending upon its environmental factors, what's inside and outside of it, what it's dealing with, etc. So, because this is free and and easy and a quick passage, it's something that you should understand why we try to control metabolically what's happening in the cell. In other words, we try to control our current equilibriums of other things using water more so than we do those other things. Because a lot of times those other things are things that require us to put energy. Look, if it's oxygen, we don't have to do that. We don't have to move water to move oxygen back and forth. We can do that through diffusion without doing anything. It's still passive transport. But with other things, which there are a gajillion other things, because basically the three things that we can move back and forth are carbon dioxide, oxygen, and water. That's our primary things. We can do a few other things with some facilitated diffusion, but those are our three primaries. Well, I mean, we got all sorts of other stuff that needs to be moved in and out. You know, hydrogen, for instance, with a positive charge does not like to move in and out on its own. So guess what? We can do that. We can do that by moving water in and allowing something to break the water down and giving us the hydrogens. Okay, then we have oxygen. Well, now we have oxygen by itself. It's been ripped off of that water molecule. That can now be moved out. Why? Because it's free. It's passive. It's passive. Again, the cell's not going to spend energy if it doesn't have to. You're not going to study for my test for seven days if you don't have to. You're not going to clean your room every night because mom hasn't said anything if you don't have to. I mean, I'm, I'm just I'm not trying to belittle us. You know, I, I'm, I don't know. Let's see. It's 730 in the morning here on Thursday. And I'm, well, I'm exactly 48 hours from stepping out of a truck and <clears throat> praying to sweet mercy that I know where I'm going and that I find an elk. Well, I got a choice when I walk out of the truck. I can point blank say that I have to walk up that tallest peak over there uh, because I got to prove to myself that I can do it. Or you could probably expect what I'm going to do, which is this low-lying hill over on this other side looks like a good spot where elk may also be. I think I'll go there. Why would I do that? Well, because I don't want to expend energy that I don't have to spend. 
I certainly don't want to if I got to hold on to energy to keep me from getting eaten by a mountain lion. So my point is, when it comes to the ideas of energy, your cells are just like you are, which is probably why you are just like your cells, very simply because we just have this desire to spend as little energy as we have to. All right, some words that we got to learn. Nothing you can do besides definition type words. Put them in your brain. We're going to go over hypertonic, hypotonic, and isotonic in just a second and see what we got with all that. All right. Tonicity. It's a term that describes the ability of a surrounding solution to cause a cell to gain or lose water. All you have to do is think of the ideas of being tone. I don't like my big muscles right here. Tone, right? Tone. If you are tone, not only are you fit, right, but there is typically when we define someone as tone, there is going to be less fat, flab, and more tightness, right? So we would define that. Tonicity basically says, does the cell want to gain and lose water? So in other words, it can be less tone as it loses, more tone as it gains. If you just try to put that idea in your mind, known as tonicity. All right, hypertonic, hypotonic, and isotonic. Let's put all three of these things in our head. We'll never forget them again, uh, again and we'll all be okay, all right? So we'll move us again. All right. Hype, er, hyper, okay? Can't do anything at all besides memorize that hyper means outside, okay? Hypertonic means outside. Cell. Hypertonic. There is more solute outside. I will go back, by the way, to the other slide in case people are still writing things down. Sorry about that. So I'm getting off, not realizing that you get to not tell me, hey, by the way, I didn't get that. If y'all need to, by the way, tell whoever's running this thing, Ms. Rita. It's good to see you, Ms. Rita. Um, I, I promise to try to come back. Put, Tell her to pause the video if you have to. Okay, whatever you got to do. Hypotonic. There is less on the outside. There's more on the inside. Do it this way. Okay. Iso. There's an equal number in both places. All right? So, this is solute again. Stop for a second and think. Osmosis and solute. What does water do? Take a look at this one. Water always moves, uh, Bella, water always moves from an area of high concentration of solute to low or low concentration to high. Thank you very much, Bella. From... Low to high. Hopefully Frank's not distracting you today and he's acting right. Okay? So it's from low to high. So I want you to watch. In a hypertonic solution, watch this cell. Where's the water going to go? Outside or inside? That's right. Outside the cell. In a hypotonic solution. Aaron, what's it going to do? Inside the cell. In an isotonic solution, what's it going to do? Outside and inside. It's just going to go back and forth. What happens to a cell that is in a hypertonic solution if it loses water? It's going to shrink. We're going to learn that that can be very serious and deadly for this cell. What's going to happen, happen here in a hypotonic? It's going to swell which can be very serious, especially for animal cells, as it wants to lice and basically explode. Cytolysis. What's going to happen here? Nothing. So it's going to stay happy, right? These are animal cells. A plant cell will do the same thing here. It will shrink. And obviously we understand that idea. It's going to die, okay? Plasmolysis is what we call this. Here, not so much for a plant cell. Not at all. Hayden, why would a plant cell versus an animal cell not swell like this and explode? Think. Cell wall. Rigid cell wall. Water gets pumped into its central vacuole. 
and it fills that central vacuole to give this what we define as turgor pressure, or more importantly, it makes the cell structurally sound. So now a plant cell, which doesn't have skeletal systems like we do, now a plant cell has got both a cell wall and it has turgor pressure. Those two things allow a plant cell to stand up on its own, giving it structure and rigidity. Okay? Here, P for plant, A for animal. Okay? Here, the plant cell, okay, was shot. It's just as bad as anything else. Here, animal, just as bad. Shrunk. Water left it. Here, animal cells swole too bad, typically going to result in them busting. Here, plant cell is as happy as it can be. This is what plant cells love. They love hypotonic solutions. It is what gives them the greatest turgor pressure and the greatest stability. Isotonic is what animal cells love because they stay the same. Sadly, this is what happens to a plant cell. In other words, the vacuole does not get distended enough and so what happens is that we have a flaccid cell. Cell's not dying per se, but it lays over, limp. It's not strong. So this is hyper, hypo, and isotonic. Hypertonic, there is more outside solute. Hypotonic, there's more inside solute. Isotonic, they're equal. Okay? These are the things that happens for animals and plant cells. I mean, this has got to be like the next, I haven't even looked. This has got to be like the next seven, ten slides we have on this, this information. Okay? Hyper, hypo, iso. All right. I'm going to go back real quick because I may not have given you the time to write down what is here. <clears throat> Again, tonicity is basically the cell's desire to do that. So we would talk about its tonicity and say it's uh, more or less tone, to, uh, uh, has more or less tonicity to, to take in or uh, to lose water. Uh, cells shrink. Look at this. In a hypertonic, cells swell in a hypotonic. In isotonic solutions, look at this. Animal cells are normal. That's great. Plant cells are flaccid. They're not strong. Okay? So if I ask you what we prefer for animal cells, we're isotonic. If I ask you what plant cells prefer, we are hypotonic. If I ask you what happens to a hypertonic solution, that stuff you should know. Okay? All right. Everybody's good here? Tyler, you, you here or are you at the wrong table right now? Scoot back over, Tyler. Come on. Come on. We all know where you're supposed to be. Yeah, I know. You probably aren't taking notes right now. I mean, I know Shawna Gannenberger's not. She's dead asleep. All right. Here we go. So, contractile vacuoles. Can you see them here, right? So, basically, its job is to do what? Help with water balance, right? They'll literally bring water in and out, right, as this paramecium exists inside of water, okay, depending upon hypo and hypotonic solutions. Here's a terrific picture of everything that happens that I just drew for you, that exists for you. You now have it on my test. I, you're not going to be required, I don't think, to draw these. I'm not positive. I'll have to go look at that, and we'll talk about that on a review day. Um, but here is, if you look, an animal cell, too much water coming in. Why? It's a hypotonic. It's going to lyse. Cytolysis is what we call this. An explosion of a cell. Cytolysis. You're going to need to know that. C-Y, I have no idea how to spell this. C-Y-T-O-L-Y-S-I-S, -S, maybe. Um, isotonic, right? We're perfectly happy. Water comes in, water goes out, everything's fine. Hypertonic, we lose all our water and we shrivel up. Look at plants. Plants and hypertonic, man, they got this thing filled up, right? Huge central vacuole fills up with, with water. It creates turgor pressure. We call this turgid. Some people call this turgid, right? With this, in an isotonic, we become flaccid because we don't have as much water. We've had water come in and out. We want water just to come in, okay? And with a plasma, with our uh, shriveled here, with our hypertonic, all of our water's left, okay? We basically are peeling our plasma membrane, as you can see, off of our cell wall. It's a bad day for this cell, okay? Plasmolysis is going to be its end result and death, okay? Let me go back and play this for you again. You can see these cells actually growing. 
watch up here as I play it again. See them swelling? That's literally them taking on water, right? So if that cell is taking on water, what type of solution is it in, Miss Mallory? It ain't hypertonic, right? It's got to be a hypotonic solution. Hypotonic solution causing water to come in, causing the cell to want to swell. Okay? Here's a vacuole, right? We're going to watch this paramecium vacuole. You can literally see here, right, all this movement of water amongst everything else that's kind of sitting still. Notice how all this is basically sitting still. You just watch here as there's this constant movement here. Why? It's because it's dealing with the influx of water, either bringing water in and then putting water back out. In other words, it's trying to maintain a balance in this situation, okay? Here is some plasmolysis, okay? So this is some deaths of cells. Watch these jokers shrink. Not a good day for the Eladia leave. We will look at Eladia uh, when I get back. And you should know. Uh, let's see if we do. Um, Miss Emery, what are all these green things that exist here in these cells? That's correct. Chloroplast. Elodea is one of the largest amounts of chloroplast that exist uh, inside of any, any plant, which is why it's so awesome to be able to look at them. But I want you to notice how everything has shrunk so bad. I mean, look, take a look here. I'm not going to be able to show you from that one per se, even though it's a very good example. But I'm going to, if you look at this first row, which is behind this thing right now, so look right here behind here. Notice how the square, right? Let me get the camera. How the square has a circle that's like this now. That circle should have been out at the edge of the, that square. What was the square? Well, it's the cell wall. That cell membrane should have been against that cell wall. As tight as it can get. Watch this again. I mean, just watch how, how large those things are initially. And what's being done is that the membrane is being pulled off like this. It's being pulled off of the actual cell wall. And so they're just shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. These cells are destined for death solely because they are in what? Now, they're in a hypertonic solution, more solute outside, and that's exactly what's causing everything to leave, right? It's no different than us drinking salt water to get hydrated. <laughs> What winds up happening is that all of our water leaves our cells, okay, because there's a higher concentration of salt outside. You feel like you're going to be more hydrated if that happens? Obviously, you know you're not, right? So that should give us an idea. Again, you need to know some words, and I, here's one of them on there. I don't know if we have a slide of this. Plasmolysis, it is the death of a plant due to a hypertonic solution, shrinking, okay? Cremation, not cremation. We're not talking about granny and the ashes that are on the in the urn on the countertop. Uh, we are talking about crenation, C-R-E-N-A-T-I-O-N. Crenation. I don't even know if I even spelled that right. Crenation is the death of an animal cell from the same thing, okay? Shrinkage, right? Notice when we talk about hypotonic solutions, we don't have a plant death version of that. Why? In a hypotonic solution, what's a plant doing? It's happy. It has turgid, right? It's turgid pressure. It's fine. What does happen for us with a animal cell? Well, in that case, they take on too much water and they lyse, what we call cytolysis. That is the busting of a cell. That's all that word means. Lysing is the bursting, but we can say lysing about other things. We can actually lyse a water balloon. But when we say cytolysis, we're saying that we are actually lysing or exploding, right? Popping, bursting a actual cell, okay? So hopefully we got all that.
here is a target Elodea, right? You'll see all these chlorophyll in here. You're getting a chance to see all these um, once we get into it. They specifically have dyed the water, okay, so that it shows up better. So I'll show you this here. And watch as we see these cells here. Notice how your, your plasma membranes are staying where they're supposed to, right? They're just focusing. Notice how all of your uh, chloroplasts are all happy, right? Able to move around. They're not being shrunk into one place as water is just ripped out away from them. So they're certainly able to float and do much better in that case. Notice how there's no, no gaps that exist really between uh, the cell walls and the actual uh, cell membranes. Uh, you do see some gaps here. We'll talk about that uh, later when we start talking about plants. Okay, but those are supposed to be there. But you can see how these things stay together in this case versus this whole blue thing turning into a circle right here. Okay, so turgor pressure. Why? Because it's in what type of solution? Hypotonic solution creating turgor pressure. Okay. Okay. So, a few things to take note of here. Hydrophobic substances easily diffuse across the cell membrane. Not hydrophilic, hydrophobic substances. So, don't be confused about that idea. All right? Phobic. No energy required, passive transport, etc. Polar or charged substances do not easily cross cell membranes. Okay? So, polar is what? Hydrophilic, water-loving things do not like to cross, okay? Instead, polar or charged substances move across membranes with the help of specific transport proteins called facilitated diffusion, okay? I think Ms. Barry wants me, but she's just going to have to wait, all right? Facilitated diffusion. Facilitated diffusion is what you would define as active transport minus ATP expenditure. So in other words, we have proteins that do some function, of moving something in and out. Uh, Aquaporin is a good example. Um, we have some channel proteins that bring glucose in. Um, <clears throat> any of those things would be good examples of facilitated diffusion. In other words, it does not come directly through our phospholipids. It comes through a protein, primarily either going to be a channel protein or whatever else it is. Okay. Notice as well, it is still passive. If it's passive, is it going to go up or down a concentration gradient K? If it's passive. Down, right? It has to. Nice. It has to go down. The only reason that it possibly could go up is if we spent energy because we had to move it from low to high concentration, which is what all of active transport is to begin with. So I want you to get this idea again. Passive means no, no expenditure of energy. None. Okay? Passive means we are going from high to low concentrations of what? of whatever it is, all right? Down the concentration gradient is how we'd say that. Again, we still have passive when it comes to osmosis, but we're just going from high to low, what? Solute concentrations because we are trying to, sorry, low to high concentrations, uh, solute concentrations because we are trying to balance out the actual solute, okay? So again, high to low is how we move things. And again, even in the water situation, we're still doing that. Still, that's why it's still passive. But we are doing that for osmosis for a solute balance, not for a water balance. Okay, water can just freely move back and forth all it needs to. It's going to be balanced all the time. Okay, so the thing that changes that is what the solute's doing. All right. So again, facilitated diffusion. Notice this does not require energy, and it relies on the concentration gradient. All right. Everybody's got this. Hydrophobic substances easily diffuse. Polar charge do not. So, I mean, do you think I'm going to ask a question on a test where, you know, I've said, hey, you know, you have this, 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 and this, which of these will not cross the concentration gradient, and I give you something that's charged or that's hydrophilic, and I say that it is? Yeah. Okay? So, again, if I were to say the only way things can move across a membrane without expending uh, energy is called diffusion, your answer to that would technically be false because there is diffusion and facilitated diffusion. In other words, sometimes it needs a little help. And so there's some proteins, transport proteins, channel proteins that can help us do that, okay? Transport proteins help specific substances diffuse across the membrane down their concentration gradients and thus requires no input of energy. 
No surprise there. Zero. The very rapid diffusion of water into and out of certain cells is made possible by a protein channel called, there we go, aquaporin. So, you know, water does go in and out of a cell, but if we need to move some water in and out of a cell, if we need to, to show enough, bring some water in or take some water out to create a balance of a solute, we do so through aquaporin. Aquaporin, again, is nothing more than a protein, right, that freely lets that water move in and out. No expenditure of energy. It is facilitated diffusion, and it requires no effort. It just happens, right? Cell knows it needs to happen, and so it makes it happen. All right? Any questions at all about that? Will you please direct those questions to somebody that's there since I can't answer it? I'm trying to give you guys time to write this stuff down because I know full well that Bella doesn't have this done yet. So again, don't don't overthink. Still say diffusion is still passive. Just reduce some proteins to make it happen. Very simplistic idea. Okay? All right, so just no aquaporin is the actual term for that protein channel, for water. Okay? Not for glucose, for water. Everybody's good there? So there you go. You can see it here. This transport protein basically is made to fit just one thing. And so it lets it come in and out freely. All right? That's all it's doing. Okay. So we are 36 minutes into this video. Um, for the sake of keeping things the way that we need to keep them, I will end the video here. That doesn't mean put your stuff up. Tomorrow, I will go over active transport. Make sure that we're all on the same page with it. Okay? Then we will turn around and we will have a Wednesday homework day, basically. A Thursday review and a Friday test. Okay? That's going to pretty much be our plan. I hope everybody's doing very, very well. I hope nothing else has popped up for my seniors that has caused them to not be here. Hopefully Bella's shown up to more than one class so far this week, which is the first one. So she's doing good if she's here at this point in time. Um, I do miss you guys. Um, I hope that everything will go well, and I will be back shortly. And uh, if I can be back earlier, I will be. I promise. Uh, I'm not going to get home next Monday and stay at home for a week. So, uh Hopefully things are going well with you guys. Keep grades up. Do well, please. Um, I am going to make sure that everything that I've done, at least for this thing, videos, etc., I'm going to try to make sure it's on RenWeb so that there's access to this in case you want to go back and watch that kind of thing. That way I understand you not being able to ask me questions, but I have a hard time feeling like there should be questions over something this straightforward. Uh, and so at this point in time, you should be able to watch a video again if you have a question about something specifically, okay? All right, so tomorrow, active transport. Look forward to seeing you. Uh, I'll see you then. Thank you.